Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about cardiac and multi-parameter patient monitoring. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. The learning objectives we will be discussing in this video will be what is cardiac monitor and multi-parameter patient monitor? What are the indications for multi-parameter patient monitor? What are the parameters that can be monitored using a multi-parameter patient monitor? And what are the nursing considerations? Let's get into the session. A cardiac monitor is a medical device used to continuously monitor and display various parameters related to patient's cardiovascular system. A patient monitor or multi-para monitor is a medical device designed for continuous monitoring and display of various physiological parameters to assess a patient's health status. Both the monitors serve the real-time information about the electrical activity of the heart and continuously monitoring vital signs including temperature, heart rate, invasive blood pressure and non-invasive blood pressure, oxygen saturation, respiration, central venous pressure, ETCO2, and other parameters in order to assess and manage patients. Now, indications for cardiac and multi-parameter patient monitoring. The indications include cardiac conditions such as heart failure, arrhythmias, ST segment monitoring, coronary artery disease, or recent myocardial infarction, chest pain or angina, post-cardiac surgery, may require continuous cardiac monitoring to assess their heart's function. It is also indicated in post-operative care after cardiac catheterization, angioplasty, or stent placement to monitor and detect complications and assess the effectiveness of intervention. It is indicated to monitor medication effects in order to titrate the medications and to know the effect of medications. In critical illness with multiple organ involvement, often require continuous monitoring to ensure any changes in their cardiac or respiratory status. Recovery from acute events. Recovering from acute cardiac events such as heart attack or cardiac arrest may need continuous monitoring. In electrolyte imbalances, for example, hyper and hypokalemia, etc. Next, what are the parameters that can be monitored using a cardiac monitor or patient monitor? Electrocardiogram. This has a 3-lead or 5-lead mode by using ECG electrode. This will be attached on the patient's chest and the cable needs to be connected in the monitor in order to monitor the electrical activity of the heart displaying the heart rate and rhythm. Next is heart rate. The number of heartbeats per minute. Here, monitor shows HR is 82 beats per minute and ECG rhythm or waveform. And both rate and rhythm helps to detect any abnormalities or arrhythmias. Next is ST segment monitoring. It helps to detect changes in the ST segment of the ECG which may indicate myocardial ischemia. Now comes Nursing considerations. Prepare the skin and connect the leads properly as recommended. For example, here we have a three lead input and the direction of placement given in the connector. Accordingly, it should be placed and other end will be connected to the monitor. Next is regularly assessing the ECG waveform for signs of arrhythmias or abnormalities. Next is heart rate alarm. In case of tachycardia, which may be more than 120 beats per minute, or bradycardia, which may be less than 60 beats per minute, act quickly and inform to the doctor. Make sure power card should always be connected. Next comes respiratory rate. Count the number of breaths per minute, providing information about respiratory function. And there is no specific cable to be connected. 
ECG electrodes are strategically placed on the patient's chest to measure thoracic impedance, that is moment of air in and out of the lungs during the breathing cycle. With this thoracic impedance, respiratory rate will be calculated. Next is waveform. The displayed waveforms of respiration helps to identify respiratory abnormalities or abnormal breathing pattern. Now the nursing considerations include assess the patient's respiratory effort and pattern, recognize changes in respiratory rate that is tachypnea or bradypnea and report promptly, consider factors like pain, anxiety or respiratory conditions when interpreting respiratory rate. These abnormal breathing patterns we have discussed in one of our previous video and the link is given below for your reference. Next comes temperature. A specialized temperature probe is used for transnasal temperature monitoring. This probe is designed to be inserted into the nasal cavity. Different types of temperature probes may be used including rectal, nasal, tympanic, that is ear, skin surface probes, etc. There will be a dedicated display area for showing the patient's temperature readings mostly a numerical readout. Channel, which includes dual channel T1 and T2 with temperature difference. Measurement ranges from 25 to 50 degrees Celsius. And the nursing considerations include monitor for changes in temperature and report fever or hypothermia. An alarm is set for the same. Next comes SpO2 that is oxygen saturation. Cardiac monitor has pulse oximetry or saturation probe to measure the patient's oxygen saturation levels and providing information about respiratory function. The measurement ranges from 0 to 100 percentage. Finger clip. The most common method involves placing a small sensor of an a clip on patient's fingertip. Other sites such as air lobe or toe can be used. Nursing considerations include ensure proper sensor placement and assess skin perfusion. Respond to low oxygen saturation levels or hypoxia promptly. Recognize factors that may affect accuracy such as nail polish or poor perfusion. Now, SpO2 level and its interpretation. SpO2 level of 95% and above is considered normal. SpO2 between 88 to 92% is normal for COPD patients. SpO2 between 91 to 94% is considered borderline. SpO2 between 85 to 90% indicates hypoxic. And SpO2 below 85% indicates severe hypoxic. Next comes ETCO2 monitoring. Measuring mode is mainstream and side stream. Cardiac monitors has capnography measuring n tidal carbon dioxide levels to assess respiratory status. n tidal carbon dioxide is a partial pressure of carbon dioxide at the end of an exhaled breath and providing information about the patient's respiratory status. ETCO2 sensor probe from the monitor will be connected in nasal prongs, a face mask or an endotachial tube which is used to collect a sample of exhaled air. ETCO2 normal ranges between 35 to 45 mm Hg. Capnography provides instantaneous information regarding ventilation, that is how effectively carbon dioxide is being eliminated by the pulmonary system. Perfusion, that is, how effectively carbon dioxide is being transported through the vascular system to the lungs. And metabolism, that is, how effectively carbon dioxide is being produced by cellular metabolism. Next comes blood pressure. Two types include invasive and non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. Invasive blood pressure monitor 
This provides continuous and accurate blood pressure measurements, which includes systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, and mean arterial pressure. The alarm is set for hypertension and hypotension. This enables real-time monitoring of blood pressure changes and is useful in critically ill patients for titrating vasopressors and other medications. Invasive blood pressure monitoring by arterial line setup. Here, arterial catheter is inserted into a radial artery. Transducer is connected in the IV stand at the level of lobostatic axis. Pressure monitoring line is connected to the transducer kit. Pressurized saline bag is attached in the IV pole and the IV tubing connected in the other end of the transducer. Cable from the transducer is attached to the monitor for measuring real-time blood pressure. The nursing considerations include removing air and clots from the lines, Check the backflow of arterial line. Position the transducer at the level of the right atrium. Maintain pressure back to 300 mmHg. Check the site and position of arterial line. Perform zeroing and square wave test as and when required. Next comes non-invasive blood pressure monitoring. Work mode. It has an option for manual, continuous, or automatic. Non-invasive blood pressure cuff will be tied and connected to the monitor in order to monitor the blood pressure. This method uses an automated cuff to periodically measure the blood pressure. This displays systolic, diastolic, and mean arterial pressure, and it helps to identify hypertension and hypotension. An alarm is set for the same. Nursing considerations include using appropriate cuff size to obtain accurate readings, place the patient arm at heart level for accurate measurements, check for any leakage and disconnection, check the trend of blood pressure, and if there is any abnormal deviation, inform the doctor. Next comes central venous pressure. The pressure in the right atrium is known as central venous pressure. The proximal end of the central venous catheter is connected to a pressure monitoring system that includes a transducer. The transducer converts and displays the CVP readings. The normal range for CVP is between 5 to 10 cm water, that is 2 to 6 mm Hg, when taken from the mid-axillary line at the fourth intercostal space. This helps to identify hyper or hypovolemia. Nursing considerations include zeroing and calibration. Regularly zero and calibrate the pressure monitoring system to maintain accuracy. Multipara monitor has an option to check vital trends in numerical and graphical and it has an option to connect in the central monitor. Next comes an important option that is alarm volume. This can be adjusted and alarm helps in the early detection of any changes or abnormalities in a patient's vital signs. This allows nurses to intervene promptly and prevent potential complication and to ensure patient's safety. So. So far, we have discussed what is cardiac monitor and multi-parameter patient monitor, what are the indications for multi-parameter patient monitor, what are the parameters that can be monitored using a multi-parameter patient monitor, and what are the nursing considerations. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it, and subscribe it, and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.